Hi there friends, fans of Crypto Woo and astrology. My name is Aura. I'm here to talk a little bit about some later developments in the crypto space. Um, so yet again, we have once again a new Satoshi um, throwing his hat in the ring and trying to duke it out with all the other Satoshis out there. Um, so let's take a look at it and see if uh, this Satoshi is actually a real Satoshi. Um, so, and uh, also, if you haven't read it, I did write a story. It's on my blog on who is actually Sashimi Yakatori is my version of the Satoshi Yakamoto story. Meant to be funny, my story. And so here we go. We have this guy here who says he is Sash Satoshi Nakamoto. And his story is, he's got a, like a very nice looking blog here. This kind of, I don't know, generic blog um, form. And he's got his part one, part two, and all this stuff about being Sa Satoshi and the origins of Bitcoin and where his name came from. You guys can go check it out. Take a look at this, uh, this blog. I will put it Put the link down below. He's got some pretty good uh, history of Bitcoin in here. It's actually a good read because if you want to know sort of mm, the historical context that Bitcoin came out of, um, he does throw in a lot of facts and stuff. But I'll tell you, the way this guy talks doesn't have any like passionate conviction in it. And it really doesn't sound real to me. hes I don't believe he's Satoshi at all. He has a lot of really good facts in here, and he's a lot more credible than Craig Wright, who calls himself by the third person. You know, Satoshi did this, and Satoshi did that, which, if it was you, you wouldn't refer to yourself in the third person. That's just a sign of deception. Just go go look up some sort of basic, like, um, how to spot a liar, uh, like, tutorials, and that'll be in there. Um, another one is... Um, Oh, there's a lot of them. People have a lot of tells. But uh, yeah, when, they, when they're saying something and they're going like that, that's usually a sign that someone's lying also. Um, so, and, and then actually Sarah Westall is doing this really cool thing where she has a woman on who shows how to spot a liar, how to tell what's going on in someone's voice by their voice patterns. These are all things that can help you with your own sort of intuitive knowing and build up your like lie detector, because it's incredibly difficult to know the truth from fa fantasy, fiction, whatever's out there is like basically a lot of manipulation. So anyway, he goes into a lot of stuff here. He talks about numerology, which is kind of interesting coming from a Satoshi. Um, and uh, yeah, so he talks about Pal, you know, Hal Finney, who was very much instrumental in the beginning of the encouragement and the creation of of Bitcoin and blockchain. Um, Hal Finney was uh, one of the cypher funk, cypher punks, who was one of the original kind of rebels out there in the um, coding community. So uh, he's, and he lays out his thoughts, the way he was thinking about it. Um, who is Satoshi? He talks about having had a nickname that had the same numerological value as Satoshi, and that's why he picked that name. These are all kind of these are kind of nice. I mean, these are this is stuff that some people might, you know, use symbolically in creating an identity. This is kind of a plausible story. But I will tell you that I feel very much like, and he he also lists like a um, a uh, what is it a um, a website that he um, uh, that he registered. Okay, and it was registered anonymously. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here that someone could find through research. He's got this computer here. He's showing some stubs of pay things. These are all things that are very, um, you know, these are facts, right? And so it is kind of compelling information. Um, and he has several um, kind of parts to this story. And it does make a pretty interesting read because it has a lot of factual historical data about Bitcoin and where it all came from and how it all unfolded. And so here's the article that uh, Bitcoin.com did about it, which says another self-proclaimed Satoshi fails to sway the crypto community. So no one in the crypto community believes this guy, even though he's got all this facts and evidence and stuff like that. We could go and find that stuff. You can go and research and pull it up and 
you know, maybe he was close to what was going on at the time and has some stuff that circumstantially fits in. So, you know, maybe he had some conversations with Satoshi on Reddit or by email. So there's kind of a lot of ways that someone could sound plausible as a Satoshi. But really and truly, the only way someone can actually prove that they're Satoshi is by really and truly, the only way someone can actually prove they're Satoshi is by opening up the wallet with, with all the Bitcoins in it, the wallet with, that Satoshi has, and moving them. That would prove who Satoshi is. So this is still, for now, going to remain a mystery. And so here they go into it. They talk about this guy and his association with Hal Finney. And, um, you know, today when Bitcoin is understood by the advances of technology, but at the same time is being hijacked by greed, I feel I have a duty to work hard and make my creation better and take its vision to the next level. This is really weird language and not the language of someone who's got conviction behind them or any feeling emotion and um yeah so it just doesn't it doesn't jive for me it sounds like a liar and um you know the fa the thing is this whole website is very well um well laid out it's very strategic very professional and it, it's kind of the opposite of what the original coders were which were being like raw they would have like things written in code it wouldn't be slick and pretty like this and what it feels to me like is that there's very much someone behind this who wants to you know create this glamorous kind of myth out there either wants to just create confusion but it feels like the person who wrote this story feels to me like they were hired to do it um, and here he says, I wanted to empower the poor person, empower the little man, create something that was accessible as the people's money, the people's bank with no boundaries, no nationalities and no discrimination where nothing was controlled by the government and where no one dictated and destroyed people for the sake of misplaced politics. Um, so there, you know, he's got all these um kind of idealistic things that would supposedly kind of appeal to the original crowd who adopted Bitcoin, who did have, you know, anarchistic cypher funk kind of values. And that is where the um, biggest early adoption of crypto came from, the people who were really championing it. So, you know, it's, um, they, oh, they even have some some uh, idea of who they think did it. Mr. Bilal Khalid and, uh, I can't even say that name. Mr. Munir Aslam Malak. Malik. Um, so they have uh, some sort of um, the they have some sort of like evidence here showing that this guy is not really uh, associated the way he says he is. So there you go. He is entirely not being believed. This is another debunking Satoshi. So this is my debunking Satoshi too. Um, and uh, yeah, so. You know, do you buy it? Do you believe this guy? He might have some evidence, sort of circumstantial evidence, but that's not going to hold up. That's not true, right? The, the only thing that's going to hold up is doing something that only Satoshi can do. So I think this guy is a liar, and so does pretty much the entire blockchain community as laid out here in this article on Bitcoin.com. So Bitcoin.com, they don't like uh, Craig Wright either and don't think he's real because they can see the evidence, right? They lay out the evidence. They're laying it out in a uh, logical fashion. So it's a, it's a good source of information. Yes, it's Roger Ver's company. Yes, Roger Ver believes in Bitcoin Cash. Yes, Roger Ver has been around since very early in crypto and was one of the first adopters. So he would actually, and it's not him. He didn't write this article, but they do a lot of factual you know, with good uh, journalistic practices of uh, coverage of stories. So I like them as a resource for information. Uh, there are others. Um, I can't think off the top of my head. But uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I do take the feeds from a couple of these really good, um, you know, blockchain news story sources. So these are definitely not the only source of information that I get, but these guys are good. So there you go. That's my take. I think this guy is no way in hell going to be really and truly Satoshi. I think that these guys did good research. They found the source. Whoever owns that blog is really the one who's paying for this story, which was written by a not great 
fiction writer. Okay, fiction writer, but not great. So just read it. Take a look. See what you think. So there you go. The latest in the ongoing Satoshi saga. And go ahead and read my story. Hopefully it's more amusing than this. My story. Who is Sashimi Yakitori? I don't know. Let's figure it out. See you later. Bye.